Hello, good evening and welcome back to the fish lot there, out on the shore at night. It's, it's been a while since we've been out foraging on a night. There is only really one reason for that. The foraging that we do on the shore, it relies on certain conditions all coinciding. One of those being large spring tides, another being either settled weather or weather in a certain direction, and more importantly, no rain. <laughs> so tonight we have that, almost. We've got quite a, quite a strong northerly wind, but that shouldn't stop us. We've got a large spring tides, we've got about another hour of the ebb. So that means the tide's going to be going out for another hour. I'm going to follow it all the way down to the low tide line and just see what we can find. Ideally, tonight, I'm looking for shellfish. It's been a while since we've been out foraging on shore at night, so I'm going to cover a couple of things real quickly. Yes, you'll see, I'm wearing a life jacket. I'm out on the shore at night by myself, I'm going to wear one of these. Another thing is, my wife knows where I am. She knows roughly what time I'm going to get here and what time I'm going to leave. So if she hasn't heard from me by a certain point in time, she knows to either ring me or try and find me. Just be safe. That being said, let's go. One thing I can talk about straight away is, if you haven't done much foraging before, if you don't know roughly what it's going to be like in the area where you're at, or if, you, if you're travelling to a new spot and you want to know what's going to be present in that area, the best thing to do is look at the high tide line. Look at the strand line. Because everything that you see up there is going to show you what's living in the area. So up here on the high tide, you can see where the seaweed's all been washed up. This is the high tide line. There are limpets, there are cockles, and there are lots and lots of mussels. So I've been here two minutes and I've already identified that there's going to be winkles, cockles, mussels, limpets, and what else have we got? There's a surf clam and oyster shells, netted dog whelks, slipper limpets and this one, <laughs> I'm glad I found that one, look, that one there. That one I think is called like a pelican's foot shell. I'm going to put that one in my pocket. But yeah, after only being here for a couple of minutes, I've already identified like four or five species of shellfish that's going to be present in this area, what I can keep my eye out for. Some of them are going to be present at different areas in the tide line. Mussels, you can find them almost right up on the strand line. So if the tides aren't very big, mussels are a good thing to go and try and forage. Right, let's start moving. Moving a little bit further down the tide line, we've got into all the seaweeds. This is bladder rack, you've got sea lettuce, and we're starting to see there's a cockle. That's full. We're starting to see lots of empty ones. So we're getting into where the cockles are living. There's a live mussel as well. Now, I'm not going to collect mussels today because they're, they're quite plentiful high up on the shore. I'm looking for stuff down there. So I'm looking for stuff like cockles. Yeah. You're just keeping it there's there's one living in the sand. Now that for me is too small. That that is gonna be big enough legally to take, but for me that's too small. This is the size, this is the minimum size what I'm gonna be taking. Yeah, you can see there's more and more of them as we're working down. There's another one. <laughs> This is why I was saying that it was good sometimes to go foraging just after weather in a certain direction. Rough weather can dislodge shellfish out of the sand, so it makes them easier to find. So after periods of bad weather, it can be a good time to go foraging on the shore. Look, there's a lot of them, but they're all just a little bit too small. Let's see. There's a nice one. There are two crackers, that one there and that one there, look. That is the ideal size that we're looking for. Already this high up on the tide line, I've found myself a couple of handfuls of nice cockles. But, like I say, I've just said it, this is quite high up in the tide line. So this area here, I can come back and forage with when the tide's already turned. 
the area nearer the low tide line is uncovered for the shorter amount of time. So even though I've managed to find some nice cockles, I'm going to leave this area and go and check down there. And then after I've checked down there, I can come back and check up here. Now that I'm down to the low tide line, I'm still scanning around for anything I can find. Because there are still a lot of cockles around. Now by, by simply walking around, I could rake around in the sand area and I could probably find some more. But I don't want to disturb all the sand, because look, see that worm just dropping into there then? By raking and digging the sand, you disturb all the seabed. You take up all the seaweeds, you take up all the little wormholes. Yeah, simply by walking along like this and by being selective, it's far less damaging. And you can see I'm still getting plenty. Here, look, see? Well, there's a nice one. These here, this is a spiny cockle or a king cockle. You can see it's slightly different than the other ones. Oh, there's a nice one. Take that. Now what I'm looking for is anywhere in here, stuff from out there gets washed in, gets rolled in. So all I'm looking for is I'm just scanning round. Oh, some sea lettuce. That, that's what we're looking for. That right there. You see what's probably happened to this guy? Have you noticed that all the weed, all the weed all around is getting washed by the tide? All these little waves are washing it, washing it, washing it. I think what's happened to this guy I think what's happened to this guy is them little pieces of seaweed on there because of the extra drag it's caused in the tide I think as these little waves have hit him they've skidded him and skidded him and skidded him closer to shore that is exactly what we're after that is a king's collar that there actually is a slipper limpet on it as well There's a collection of slipper limpets. You see them all sat on each other's backs. There. See it? Again. Little bits of seaweed. How big is it? Perfect size. I'd spotted a couple of cockles, look. This is what I'm looking for. But look at that. You see, I knew as soon as I'd seen that, that that wasn't right. Because you see all that lump? You can see the patterns in the sand. And your eye gets to notice it. That. There. Look, let me show you. That is called a necklace shell or a moon shell. This little, this little trap door here, you see that? It pulls that into there to protect itself because that's hard. That little piece there is called an upper cullum. Oh, who's this? See him hiding there? How camouflaged is he? Look, watch. This is a male shore crab. He's actually he's got a a barnacle virus on him. This there's a, there's a parasite living inside of his vent there, unfortunately. He's actually got a parasite in him. Poor fella. There's a couple of names for the parasite in there. It's 
called a hacker, a hacker parasite, or a barnacle parasite. Being that what it does is it, it's already that that crabs, it's already all inside of its nervous system. So I can't pick the parasite off and save it. Also, people have said, oh, why don't you kill the crab to stop the parasite? Well, then I'd, I'd possibly be removing food for something else from the ecosystem. Because a bass or something could eat that crab. Right? Sometimes you're better off just letting nature take care of nature. Now these, these are one of my favourites. Used to love these as a kid. That is an auger shell. I mean, other than a scallop, other than one of these, this is pretty much like your textbook stereotypical seashell, isn't it? If there was ever anything that embodied being by the sea, it's one of them and one of these. Leave you there and put you back in there. Now, you don't need to worry about having no water in here with these. At the minute, all that would do is it would just make the bucket heavier for me. These can survive quite happily out of water for a while, so long as you keep them damp and cool. I don't know whether you can see it. I just saw like a little puff of sand I was walking past. Here we have, here we have a couple of the king cockles, the spiny cockles. Now, even though they are larger than these ones, than the normal cockles, we foraged these before. These ones grew up to being like that big. We foraged these before, and there's not actually that much meat inside of them. Leave them there. Yeah, these, these are much tastier, and have got much more meat for the size of the shell. You'd think finding one that's like that big, there's going to be loads of meat inside. Well, they're not. There's a lot of wasted. I don't know if it's going to do it again, but that's just clapped. There is a scallop there. Just here. Just walking along and I just saw a clap and like a little flutter of sand. No, he's not going to do it again. That is a beauty, that is a that is a fantastic sized scallop. Yeah, look, this one's opened up again. Yeah, look, see. If you find them on the shore and they're open like this. See how we're closed? If you find them on the shore and they're open, just give them a tap and if they close, it means they're alive. If they close, it means that they're alive, so they're safe to take. If they don't close, it means they're dead. You don't know how long they've been dead for, so they're not safe to take. Ugh. That tide has just turned. You can see now by the colour of the water, look. We'll start making our way along. As I've had my time at the low tide line and the tide's coming back in, as I'm walking back up, I can collect my cockles. By planning the session out like that, I knew that those cockles were higher up on the tide line. So I had more time to collect those, less time down there. So I've got my scallops, which were down at the low tide line, and I'll pick the cockles up on the way back. All I've done is I've put a little bit of water in here to help them try and purge. You can see they're already we're already spitting out a little bit of dirt, a little bit of grit. These are a collection of winkles. Now these are far too small to take. But you've got winkles, limpets, cockles, little tiny auger shells. I haven't actually seen any, any queen scallops. I expected to see one or two of those. There's a rock oyster. Sometimes you get queen scallops hanging onto the sides of rocks. There's another little oyster there, look. 
you can see now how that scallop's opening up. Right, we have had a fantastic haul. We have been super lucky tonight. We've managed to get seven amazing scallops and a cracking little haul of cockles. Now, because I've got so many cockles, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to grade these. Because I've got such a good haul of really good big ones, I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick the smallest ones. Now, these, these are still big enough to take, but when I've got that many big ones, I don't need to take that many. So I'm going to probably take three quarters of what they're and then leave the rest. But these are absolute stunners. That is about on the limit of what I would take. That was That is over the legal limit but that's about as small as I would take. I did find one that was about that big, but that one, what an absolute brahma. Yeah, those two are absolute stonkers. What I'm gonna do now is after I've graded those and taken them further down, I'm gonna try and find some clean seawater. Fill the bucket full of clean seawater and then I can allow these to purge. And all I'll do is I'll just let them sit in that water, filter it through, and they'll spit out any of the sand and in the grit and all the bits and pieces. Brilliant. Here are the scallops and the cockles from which I foraged last night. All I did when I got in is I just put them into two pails of clean seawater. Now, these guys, they've purged really quickly. They're, they're chucking out next to no sand. Look at me. But the cockles, all this is, is a little fish tank aerator. Just a battery powered one that I got off eBay. It just keeps oxygen going through the water and helps some perch. I've decanted the water off these and that is how much sand they've chucked out. They've been there for maybe 10 or 12 hours. You right? Mm -hmm. So these are going to need to continue to purge. Those are good to eat now. I've just picked James up from school and we're just catching the last of the light. It is. It has been a wonderful sunset, hasn't it? All yeah. sorts of colours. Bright reds, oranges, we've just missed it by about five minutes. It's incredible how quickly it changes. But if you look at that down there, it looks absolutely glorious, doesn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't believe what type of a day we've had. James and I are going to go and have a campfire and we're going to go and do some cooking. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes. Let's go. And that is that is that is That is gorse. And Dartmoor ponies eat this. It do, Dartmoor ponies eat that? Do they not get prickled? No, they eat the yellow flowers. Oh, right. Not the actual bush itself. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. That's a gorse bush down there that James was just pointing out. And apparently the Dartmoor ponies eat the yellow flowers. Yep. Good job. Mm -hmm. The colour has changed again, hasn't it? Look. Lovely. We called one tonight. Come on then. Yeah, which, uh, we had our first proper frost this morning. It was, uh, the van was frozen shut, wasn't it? Yeah. The doors and the van were frozen shut. And you can see, because it's such a, such a clear night. It's going to be a cold night again tonight. I'm going to be happy at this campfire. James and I are going to have a little fire just in the backside of this fallen down tree, aren't we, James? And all we're going to be using is just, this is one of my old rocket stoves. These are just little pieces of wood from the fish locker workshop. <laughs> Nothing. James is busy there trying to find some more wood for the fire. All I've got is I've just built up a little bit of a fire with the offcuts of pieces of pallets. And like I said, this is one of the old rocket stoves. I'm going to be having scallops. I'm going to be having scallops and James is going to be having turkey dinosaurs and chips. Yeah, this tree. Last, since last time I've come down here, this tree's come down. It's a big one, isn't it? Yeah. You want to stop that for just a minute? I'm not going to be cooking on flames. All I'm going to do is I'm going to keep building the fire up with pieces of wood and I want to build a really good bed of coals, of red hot coals. 
I'm then going to shuck these scallops off and show you how to cook them on the, on the coals. Yeah, I will. You're going to come here with the axe and help break this up. Yeah. So You're start. chief axe man, aren't you? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I tell you what, it's, it's nice having a little fire, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Be careful as well. You don't put any any stones inside the fire anywhere near it, because any of these stones, this is the high tide line here. The tide's going down, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be foolish of me to light a fire below the high tide line and have the tide come in and put it out for me. No, the tide's on its way out. You don't want there to be any of the stones in and around the fire too close because they can be impregnated with water. When they get too hot, that water turns to steam and the rocks can explode. So yeah, you'll see that I've, I've cleared all the rocks out from anywhere right tight and close. Yeah. yeah. Like fires, don't you? Yep. Yeah. While we're building the fire up, I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna deal with these scallops. Now inside of this scallop, there is gonna be a round muscle, a round disc. It's going to be about that big, like that, in here. First thing I need to do, this is this is an oyster knife, but it works perfectly for this. Just go in at the side like that and pop the shell. There, look. Then I've found it's easier if I take my longer knife, and all you're going to do is slide it along the inside of this shell. Like that. The tops come off clean. There's that round disc of muscle. There's the stomach. This is called the frill. And that there, that quite pale looking thing there, is the coral. Now you can, you can eat the coral, you can eat the muscle. The only thing that I would discard being the stomach. So you, you can hopefully do this in a wanna. You just get hold of it and you should be able to pull it all out. Like that. Perfect. That was exactly how it was supposed to happen. I'm going to leave this in there and I'm going to cook it in the shell. So it's got its own little cooking dish there. Now from this, you can make it into, you can use it to make it into stock or I'm going to use it as bait. I'm going to take it home and I'm going to use it as bait. But the other part that I'm going to eat of this is the coral. Sometimes you can get them and they are really, really vibrant. This one is, is depleted. The coral, this part here, is its reproductive organ. This one has this one has just has just spawned, it's just bred. So there's there's nothing left in it. When you get them when they're really vibrant, they are like bright orange. The rest of that there, I'm gonna put it aside and I'm gonna take it and freeze it down and I'm gonna use it as bait on the boat. I've shucked all the scallops, there's a little bit still to do with those, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to prepare James's. Now, you don't you don't like scallops just yet, do you? No. So what we're going to do for James is with some tin foil. With your tin foil, I'm going to do some turkey dinosaurs and some oven chips. Mm -hmm. You make burgers as well at home, don't you? Yeah. And I eat them. So there's James's little parcel of chips. Turkey dinos. And your turkey dinos as well. We'll do a two and a one. We don't want to start fighting, do we? No, the turkey. Now for the scallops, all I've got is I've just got a little bit of butter. 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 And I'm just going to put a little knob of butter. In each one. Jinx. In jinx. And what they'll do is they will cook. 
They will cook inside of their own little shell and they'll produce some juice of their own. And the butter just helps them on. And I'm also going to put a little tiny bit of hot sauce in with each one. Can I leave one plain for me to try? Leave one I, I absolutely can leave one plain for you to try. In fact, I will leave the small one on the end. That looks like a James size one to me. That one there, look. Mm -hmm. So that one I will put no hot sauce in okay. and you can have a try. Good luck for trying new things. There we go. I will leave two without anything just in case you like the way that they, they taste. We'll wait for all this to die down and then we'll get the food on. I've flattened out all the coals and I'm just going to arrange all the scallops so that they fit nicely onto the coals. Now, <laughs> that is absolutely roasting. I can't explain to you how what it is. The second that my hand's in there putting them scallops on, it's burning through the glove. So yeah, just... Be sensible, use your common sense. Don't put them too far into the fire that you can't get them out because I've seen folks do that before as well. Now I will have to I will have to move them around I imagine because some parts of the fire are going to be hotter than others. But we'll just deal with that as and when it happens. And then we'll get James's on as well. One of them is cooking really fast. Yeah, one of them's cooking already, isn't it? That's a perfect space for a one dinosaur and your chips, I think. I think we'll just move this around a little bit. Move that one over and that one over. You'll be careful because this is very, very hot, James. Yeah. The scallops are stuck into the dishes, they're stuck into the shells. When they are ready to be turned, they come unstuck. There, look, see? See how it's come unstuck? That is ready to be turned over. If they stay stuck, they're not quite ready to be turned. Like that one, look. That one's stuck still. When it's ready to be turned, it'll let you know because it'll come unstuck. So just go around testing them. And any of them... Oh, I've just realised I'm just gonna I'm gonna have to get another stick because otherwise I'm gonna make your scallops all spicy. Mm -hmm. Go and grab the other stick out of the box. Oh, oh, that one's ready to be turned. They won't take more than more than a minute. I've moved them around so they've all got into the heat for a certain amount of time and they are ready to come off. Even mine. The only one that's not ready to come up is that one there, that needs a little bit longer. Okay. Now do not be fooled because those shells, look how hot they are, look with the juice. They are scorching hot, that, that would take your fingerprints clean off. One of yours, that one there of yours, that one there is ready. Okay. Right, now just let me let me get these ones off the fire and get your tin foil right in the middle so you can get some extra heat and we'll try some scallops, okay? <laughs> Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> How cold is it? 20.5. Cold, breath cold. Yep. Mm. Yeah, Take your piece of bread bun, look. Yep. And all you need to do, where am yep. I going to put it? I'll put mine down there. Take your scallop yeah. and put it between two pieces of bread bun like that, look. Yeah. And you have a little scallop sandwich. Yeah. Look. Is that mine? That is yours. Keep it. Give me the bread bun. I'm just going to place it down. Place it down on top of your scallop shell so you hold it in two hands. And just give it a bite. Is it a bit chewy? Is it nice? Is it what? Great! Yeah. Wow! I didn't know you were going to like scallops. I didn't like scallops when I was a little boy. I just liked them when I was a grown-up. Mm. And now that the shells have cooled down a little bit, 
One of my favourite parts is the juice that you get out of there, look. Like that. Mm. <laughs> oh, your turkey burgers won't be long. Yeah. Get some of your butter. Butter from the bottom. Yeah. And I'm doing like the butter in the bottom, but I don't have the scallop. Oh well, that's perfect. You can just eat the scallop, and I'll have the butter at the bottom. Okay. Nearly time for your turkey dinos to come off. I'm just going to finish mopping up all this butter and chilli juice. Another brilliant thing about this hmm? is because you've cooked it in the shells, there's no washing up afterwards. You just take the shells down to a low tide line and throw them in the sea. Ho, ho, ho. So are those ones? Yep. Now, he did get... I think he's been, been caught in a bit of lava because he's got a little bit of a burned <laughs> tail, hasn't he, look? <laughs> but, there you go. There is... Ow, 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 ow. Hot, hot. Right, foot. <laughs> right, there you go. Turkey dino burger. And I'll have the little burnt bit. Lava. The burnt bit in the lava. You hear that owl? Mm -hmm. What do you think he's saying? Go to bed. <laughs> he's saying go to bed. Oh! Yeah, the chips, unfortunately, it was hard to, <laughs> it was difficult to get them just right without burning the ends, but we did our best. You did a really good job chopping that wood. Mm -hmm. And this is that scallop. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with you eating that scallop. Mum will be so surprised, won't she? She will be so surprised. Next time, mm -hmm. when I go and find in scallops, I'm going to have to find extra ones. Mm -hmm. Because you like them now as well. There you go. But be careful because it's going to be very, very hot. Okay. All right. That's why it's not even Well, you just want to eat the top bits then. Eat the bits that have melted. And we'll put it back in the fire. Oh, that's a better one. Mm-hmm. You want this one now? Mm-hmm. Right, be careful, because it is going to be super, super hot. The bottom is still squishy. Just be careful, because if it sticks to your mouth, you are going to burn yourself, OK? There we are, we are coming to the end. James is going to be finishing off a couple more marshmallows. We'll wait for this fire to finish dying down and then we'll put some sand on it. Oh, there's an owl in that tree now. You hear it? I hope you've enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you Bye. later.